Today, the Department of Justice is announcing a criminal indictment of two hackers associated with the Chinese government. The charges include conspiracy to commit computer intrusions against dozens of companies in the United States and around the world. As with all American criminal charges, individual defendants are presumed innocent unless and until proven guilty in court. This case is significant because the defendants are accused of targeting and compromising managed service providers, or MSPs. MSPs are firms that are trusted to store, process, and protect commercial data, including intellectual property and other confidential business information. When hackers gain access to MSPs, they can steal sensitive business information that gives competitors an unfair advantage. The indictment alleges that the defendants worked for a group known to cybersecurity experts as APT-10. These groups are designated as APTs, or Advanced Persistent Threats, because they use malware to gain access to computer networks and to exfiltrate or steal data over an extended period of time. These defendants allegedly compromised MSP clients in at least a dozen countries, the United States and 11 other countries. The victims included companies in banking and finance, telecommunications and computer consumer electronics, medical equipment, packaging, manufacturing, consulting, healthcare, biotechnology, automotive, oil and gas, exploration, and mining. The defendants allegedly committed these crimes in association with a Chinese intelligence agency known as the Ministry of State Security. Now, this is not the first time that the Department of Justice has accused Chinese state actors of stealing commercial information. Since the indictment of five uniformed members of the People's Liberation Army in 2014, our department has repeatedly cast a spotlight on China for its state-sponsored criminal activity targeting American corporations. More than 90 percent of the department's cases alleging economic espionage over the past seven years involve China. More than two-thirds of the department's cases involving thefts of trade secrets are connected to China. In the last few months of this year alone, our department has announced charges in three separate cases alleging crimes committed at the behest of a branch of the Chinese Ministry of State Security. It is unacceptable that we continue to uncover cybercrime committed by China against America and other nations. In 2015, China promised to stop stealing trade secrets and other confidential business information through computer hacking with the intent of providing competitive advantage to companies in the commercial sector. But the activity alleged in this indictment violates the commitment that China made. That was a commitment they made to members of the international community, to the United States, to the G20, and to APEC. Now, we want China to cease its illegal cyber activities and honor its commitment to the international community. But the evidence suggests that China may not intend to abide by its promises. For example, Chinese industrial policy, known as Made in China 2025, lists strategic advanced manufacturing industries that the nation has targeted for promotion and development. Many of the companies allegedly targeted recently by Chinese defendants operate in sectors identified in that official Chinese policy. Whether through computer hackers operating from China or Chinese nationals recruited to steal trade secrets from companies in other countries, the goal is the same, to dominate production in strategically important industries by stealing ideas from other nations. It's just as if they had broken into American companies and taken the data information out physically. They're doing it through cyber means. Now, today's charges mark an important step in revealing to the world China's continued practice of stealing commercial data. Responding to that conduct requires a strategic whole-of-government approach to the threats that China poses. That is why the Department of Justice recently announced an initiative to address a full range of threats. Mr. Demers and Director Ray have been leaders of that effort. One tactic is to increase our enforcement efforts. Another is to conduct foreign investment reviews 
to protect against China improperly acquiring sensitive information through the acquisition of American companies. A third is to find ways to better protect our telecommunications infrastructure. China stands accused of engaging in criminal activity that victimizes individuals and companies in the United States, violates our laws, and departs from international norms of responsible state behavior. Exposing these actions through the criminal justice system is a valuable tool in the Department of Justice arsenal. Faced with the detailed factual allegations today and the corroborating statements not just from the United States but from other victimized nations, China will find it difficult to pretend that it is not responsible for these actions. America and its many allies know what China is doing. We know why they're doing it. And in some cases, we even know exactly who is sitting at the keyboard perpetrating these crimes in association with the Chinese government. The alleged criminals in this case are named Zhu Hua and Zhang Shulong. We hope the day will come when those defendants face justice under the rule of law in an American courtroom. Until then, they and other hackers who steal from our companies for the apparent benefit of Chinese industry should remember there is no free pass to violate American laws merely because they do so under the protection of a foreign state. The Department of Justice and the FBI will continue to use all available tools to respond to China's economic aggression and, to, and the threat that these actions pose to the prosperity and security of the United States and other nations that respect the rule of law.